here on the Gold Bavaria, but I see a lot of little things what goes wrong that people use, for example, two minor sites in the same group in the same year, and uh, then they worry, then they worry why they have no mind control about it. And then they use it the same year again, the next year they use the same chemicals again, and we build up resistance. Because I want you to think about that a little bit. Because that's my talk, that we will do pruning, guys, and we will attack all trees uh, today, with uh, this afternoon we're pruning. Just uh, hang into it, please. Don't fall asleep and don't walk out of the morning, please. Okay, here we go. This, uh, what is pesticide resistance? And this it's a good lean way to go to IPM later on. But this is more or less what it is. It's, uh, most pests and diseases population have a very small number of, of you know, say, insects, and it gets resistant to and given pesticides. As always, guys, you even when you spray, don't think that you kill all. There's always one who will survive, okay? This again, if you use the same pesticide all the time, you build up a resistance, and there's only one insect what maybe survive, and they get resistance, and then you put another insect on, and then they will survive. And especially with mites, the population goes so quick that actually you can build up in one year mite resistance. Okay, mites are the worst. You have to remember that. Okay, this, uh, um, this again, this is that's what it means. This again, if you have um, if you have really uh, you use that a little bit, and then it's reach critical levels, and then really the pesticide you use is useless. And you will see that quite a bit, actually. i just give you an, an example that, uh, for example, I've seen people using five alticores in a year, and that's uh, I've seen even one with eight alticores in one year. And I don't want to say, but uh, you build up resistance like you have never seen before, okay? Um, yeah, I could almost say um, in Australian term, if you keep doing that, you can piss out the go on it when this we're not working, okay? This, uh, this, that's, that's how it is, you know? This is known as resistance. When you do those things, and I know nobody does, but I just want to say this. Uh, but again, this, uh, all pesticides, herbicide, insecticides, miticide, fungicides, all can actually build up. Even fungicides, people think that there's only mites, but actually also with fungicides you can actually build resistance. You see that a lot with mildew. People use the same group all the time, and we got mildew problems. This, this again, just practical. This, um, um, okay, and it is really the idea why that is, especially with mites and fungi. They're usual residents in the orchard, and they have a very short life circle. Okay, this again, you you find actually that. Uh, some people build up much more quicker resistance when they use basically the pesticide. They use much more than other people. There's, um, there's nothing new, guys. Um, in Australia, I looked at the research. The resistance has occurred already since 1950. This is something, nothing new. Just keep on using chemicals. This again. Good news is that the chemical companies, like most of the time, they come with a new chemical and then it works fantastic for a couple of years and then we use it and then we overuse it and then we have the same problem again and then the new chemical comes out and so far so good. But there's a limit what fungicides and pesticides can do in the future. Okay, there's again, uh, if you want to have a little bit more information, uh, the DPI actually has quite a <coughs> bit information about it. There's again, you can actually go to the departments and look what it is and also where you can actually the thresholds for spraying people probably don't know that but we got here a few people here very very experienced people like steve he monitor orchard and he set on thresholds and then he makes sure that you spray and again even the dpi set it up a little bit as well where you can find the thresholds you have to look for it actually west australia website is actually the best for that but uh, this again, this, um, the good news is this is a new, lot of new fungicides coming out. But actually one thing I have to say, it's a little bit naughty from the chemical companies these days. If you look actually to the chemicals, and for example, um, I can't think of it, but like in, uh, they use two groups in the same fungicide at the moment, like uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Luna, yeah, for example. You build up two resistors in two groups, okay? It is very naughty from chemical companies to do that, and it is, they work fantastic, but it is also a risk. And they are aware of it, and they are quite often protectant, but don't overuse them, okay? If the label says two times, spray two times. 
if you use them four times a year, then you have a problem. The kids that are mine, okay? Does he have a single active? This is a really problem with that, actually. This, um, I, think I find it a little bit naughty, actually. If I was for regulations, I would have, to have not even allowed you to do that. Okay? But I'm not in the regulation industry. That's, that's all good. This again, guys, this same fungicide used repetitively. And it is not so much the fungicide, and I, have, I will explain that a little bit, but uh, especially a mildew. A mildew resistant, you guys probably don't see that much, but in Tasmania, it's a real problem. The biggest problem in Tasmania is almost mildew. They build up resistance probably for the chemicals and they don't know it. And there's very little research in Australia done to fungicide resistance. Okay? We, I'm just guessing, but if you keep on spraying the same programs all around the country, then we see that mildew is just not controlled. Well, in New Zealand they do a, a project where they, not, not in mildew, but black spots, they yeah. test the chemicals on yeah, um, how they work on black spots each year. Yes. <laughs> Yes, New Zealand does it, Germany does it as well, but we in Australia, we don't do that. It's a little bit of lack, really, of industry. And you see that also with Roundup, guys. People don't realize if you use Roundup all the time, you see some grasses keep on growing in the orchard. Now, that's, that's what we call Roundup resistant. There's a little bit of research done in Australia on that, in orange. But actually, the growers are, in general, not aware of it, and they keep on spraying Roundup on them. And it is, that grass just keep on growing, basically, or some weeds, you know. This again, it is very important. Okay. This again, um, I have to say, that's about probably everybody can read that. And again, this is where I want to talk a little bit about it. You see, this is what we call the chemical class. And um, how many people look at that if they spray chemicals? Put your hands up. Very good. But it's not that many. Okay. The thing is that I want to say, uh, I find it a very good practical. If you actually make a spray program in the beginning of the year and then actually look where the gamut class is. And you see, this is where the problem is. <coughs> you see that, guys? You look at the top, you see sustain, you see that? And topos, they work for mildew. And I've got people that spray topos and they spray, uh, say, three times. And then they go to sustain. Very good. But unfortunately, that's a different name, but it is in the same group. If you're not alternating your chemicals to the group. And I know this is a common mistake, okay? Just be aware of that if you look to the groups. And again, you see here, the, even here, vision, they got still the group three in them. I know it is plus nine, but it means that you have a different group, two different groups. But if you actually look to the resistance management, you can build up two groups with that problem. But to say that, guys, you see here a little bit an, uh, an example that you look at the which group you have, and if you change your groups, and if you look to the um, fungicides, see the, the, the protectants in general, like the Dayland, the Zyram, and it's actually around the world, there's very little resistance for it. It is especially the, the ECs and the, the suffect, uh, what is it, the chemicals, the, um, what's it, um, the kickbacks basically, that's give you the problems, okay? The systemic ones, sorry, that's what I was looking for. The systemic ones are the most risky. And the thing is, with, I, probably you guys don't know that, but if you have a protected on and the fungicide fall on that, it is in general killed. But if you do actually in systemic, then it is only captured. It sits there and it's actually not killed, okay? That's a little bit of misunderstanding. And then the next infection, he goes again. And that's why they build up so much resistance. And protectants is always better. Okay, just cheaper by the way, but spray before the event. Again, look to those um, things. This, uh, coming back to this, how to minimize insecticide, miticides, resistance. Okay, this is the best answer. Who is for that? Yeah, okay. This is a simple answer. If you don't want resistance, don't spray. I, yeah, I'll tell you one little story. When, uh, I work in this district quite a bit these days, more than I probably did seven years ago. And uh, I'll tell you one, I had um, actually two growers, I said this year, we're not going to spray any miticide. And uh, I actually a little bit surprised actually, but we got actually very good predators in this district. They're probably hardy for a lot of chemicals, but they build up fantastic. And uh, they didn't spray at all for two years now. And do you know that one grower this year, I got him on board, and he sprayed for the first time in 30 years no miticide. 
and we had no problems. That was even more interesting, okay? But the predators were that strong that I could not believe it when I was checking how many predators he had. And I thought he had nothing, but he had a pretty harsh program in the past. But uh, anyway, that's one option. Okay, in practice, anyway, we probably have to put something on, so now and then. Okay, and I know that. The reality is that you have to spray. This again, this is important. Resistance management is to use RPM. This, that's where we talk about this morning, and that was the idea behind this as well. Okay, this is just the introduction. And uh, apply pesticide only when necessary, guys. You have people like Steve or Lisbeth, is she here? No, she's not. But anyway, you've got people who are scouting, and Sam, probably, I don't know, I don't see it, but you've got people. Oh, yeah, and you, they are scouting the orchards, they're looking for predators and make that decision to do, you know? And that's, you have to make that decision, you know? Sorry. <laughs> and, and then they have more brains than me about all those pesticides. But, uh, you know, I find it actually interesting. I must admit, I studied actually, I, I'm sometimes a little bit lying, but I got a university degree and I know a little bit about insects. But uh, I have to say, I know predators and I know the levels. And in Europe, actually, they give a booklet out how much really how many, what the thresholds are, and I think that's where we should work on, you know, to have to really, hum, when do we really spray? I think sometimes we are a little bit tricky happy, so as soon as we see it, we go. And that's probably where we have to change a little bit. Okay, this is very important, guys. The most important part is reading all your labels. The labels give you a lot of information, and it is surprising how people, how many people don't read the labels. People who are responsible for spraying, I look to you, if you have a big <coughs> responsibility for the labels, then uh, you probably have to read the label. I read the label out of interest, but it's, um, I find it sometimes interesting what you put on it, and if you read the label, you probably don't spray it. But um, um, rotate chemical classes in different mode of actions. The classes I explained to you guys, keep an eye on that. We, I got quite a little bit of clients these days, and we sit in the winter, we set up a spray program, we put the chemicals in, we put the classes in, and almost we stick the whole year to that program. We're not going to change it much. But you do that in the winter, sit with a cup of coffee. In the summer when you've got pressure, you don't look. You know, you want a chemical, you run to the shop and get it, and you're not always looking. But if you set it up in the beginning, you know, if you get this, we do this, you know. And this, this is the, probably the most important message I want you to give, okay, today on this. And again, the chemical classes, guys, you can see that. Um, this is from Western Australia, that's the spray pro, uh, from the DPI again. In the Victoria, we don't do that. I must say, it's really annoying. The, the New South Wales spray program, don't do this. Western Australia put the chemicals in it for us. That makes life very easy. Okay? Again, guys, you see there in Europe, right, much. you've got plenty of things like some of all. See, there's different groups again, and this is what I'm talking about, okay, the chemical class. Do that next time, look on the label, change between them, and you see like here, you see the Apollo and Perenic, see there's almost the same group again, I know this fraction different, but they are very related to each other. This again, look to those groups, guys. Very important, and actually, with miticide, you should actually use only one miticide from the group this year, and next year you should go to another miticide. This is a very, very easy practice. But people don't do that. You have to really write down what you use this year and not use next year. Okay? This, um, and again, minimize use of tank mixtures. I'll put that here actually by purpose actually, but I have seen that people put two miticides together. And we've been recommended by the retailers, okay? Tell you that's deadly. Don't do it. You build up resistance like you have never seen before, guys. I just warn you, in a certain moment you run out of chemicals very quickly. Okay, this again, um, the best thing is really resistant management to go to good RPM practices. Okay, and use alternate, alternate, um, alternate <laughs> no, I can't speak in, is it? <laughs> um, you use actually like insecticides such as mating disruption like pheromones. You can actually also uh, put oils out, you know and uh, make spray decisions on a past threshold. That's actually probably very important, you know. And um, I know that um, 
this is, this is probably the last one is, is probably people are not aware of it, but I'll just show you a little bit an ID. If you use, for example, Rempro, and I must admit, this is a little bit out of my own interest, I use that here. It's probably not quite good. But anyway, what I want to say, you can see the air clay. In the old days, you did the coho and you'd say the trap catching. I'm fine, still good that you do doing catch trap when you do the first months that you catch them. But Rimpro, actually, I can almost tell people on data when you're going to catch the first months. And Rimpro is so good that I can tell almost that you're going to catch them on that week. Okay? This is, you don't even have to look in your orchard before I tell you. How is that? But it's pure on data. But what I want to say, you can see physically when the eggs are laying, you see the indigo should be for egg laying, and the outer core should be sprayed just before that. You know, you can really see it graphic when you target that pest. And we call this really a tool to really help you to apply it on the right time when it's the pest is actually the weakest or coming out. Inzigo is no good. People say, oh, Inzigo is no good. No, it's not good if you spray Inzigo on that. You're too late. But if you spray Inzigo <laughs> before the first egg lay, your Inzigo is fantastic. And I've shown that people in this district with changing to Inzigo that we didn't use any miticide. Okay, there's people say, oh, Inzigo is expensive. I said, a miticide costs 300 bucks a hectare quite easily. Yes. Just think about it. This again, um, and another thing is, of course, um, spray applications. You know, um, we got quite often all the equipment, we got all different trees, and um, yeah, spray technology we could do another workshop on about. And, um, and again, rotate insecticides with the mode of action. That's probably the things. And this, I know that people say this, and um, Michael is not here, no, Michael didn't come. Anyway, um, he said always, uh, it's one thing people don't do this spot spraying, and he said when you've got a big farm it is not practice. And, but really, if you have only one miticide in one area, especially in the beginning of the season, you can actually spray that area. If you don't spray the whole orchard, that means that your predators can at least move back very quickly. Even if you say, look, I'm a big orchard, but that block has a problem, we spray that block only. Why would you cover the whole farm if there is a problem on your one block? And you have to be practical. I have to say, I was actually a grower myself. I had 80 hectares. I had a little bit of omite in the shed. And probably the same omite for 20 years. That was probably not good either. But I did only sometimes in a grave in little spots, you know. I would go in myself actually and drive through it. And when I saw it, then I'd just spray in a small area if I thought it was necessary. Okay. This again, I know a spot spray. This is a dirty word in the big industry, when they spray the, oh, we saw it and just spray the whole orchard. It's not always necessary to do. Okay, and again, this is, this is probably all, and you will speak more about that, actually. But um, uh, everybody can read that. This um, rotation is on, and that's probably most, uh, you know, rotation is probably most important. And then I want you to get you over to Paul, who's talk about the IPM. This, to resistant management, really, IPM is probably the answer. And Paul, you can take it over from me for this. I will come back, actually, guys.